stats. We cannot hope to find the way to Orion J. For that, we must convince the pixies to lift the spell. From what I could make of the voices, the creatures want to play with us. If that is the case, they should permit us to find their village. Little lamb. Come, I have a sneaking suspicion this path will lead us directly into their midst. Oh, what's wrong, buddy? Oh, and I should mention that Vinphilia has been informed of our situation. Of the different worlds and our mission. You may consider her an ally. Ilmeg, the fairy kingdom. Well, here we are, yet the pixies are nowhere to be seen. Knowing them, their games have already begun. In which case... Sir, there is a variety of plant native to these parts with a distinctive furled tip. Looking grass is its name. So called because it could be used to spy pixies, believe it or not. I'll explain how I know all of this later, but first I need you to help me find some. Oh, if a voice calls to you under no circumstances should you respond, you will only subject yourself to further mischief. The old face scrub. What is it you seek, child? Perhaps I can help you find it. Hm, such a rude child, and too clever by half. I shall seek my fun elsewhere. Same thing. Yeah. Ooh, a visitor. Where are you from? <laughs> Perhaps this one's hard of hearing. <laughs> what brings you here? Ah, stone deaf cowboy. Still, picking plants at our village is as good as indulging our hospitality. And who are you to turn? Who are we to turn you away? <laughs> Stay here forever. Stay forever. No. I take it you met with some trouble. Apologies for subjecting you. Can I assume from your presence that you managed to find us some looking grass? Yes, this is the stuff. Thus armed, we should be able to see through the pixies' veil of invisibility. And seeing them is the first step to dealing with them. Come, let's gather everyone and put Orion J's little trick to good use. Sitha, Krakler. The Pixie Village.
We have neither the time nor inclination to play. We have come to see Uriange. Hey, Jace. You should uh, take Pickle upstairs and play with him for a bit. Do it. We have not. Oh, he already said that. Come on, Jace, go play with him. I'm sure he'd be delighted. Now, if you'd be so kind as to lift your spell. Shall we? Should we? Would we? What now? I don't know, but this is their home, so we must indulge them. Well, there you have it. Pixie chores. I suggest we split up. for you. Little Lan is our beloved village and we want it to always look lovely and it can't look lovely without flowers blooming. And no flowers bloom lovelier than ever blooms. So here are some ever bloom seeds. Take them and sow them here, there and everywhere around the village. Simple as dimple, yes? Helping us glow flowers, are you? They'll make this house look so much lovelier. There used to be a city of mortals here, a great big bustling place called Vobert or Bovert or some such. But the Sin Eaters came and everyone disappeared. Since then, we pixies have been living here and we've given the old houses our touch. Lovely, don't you think? Alright, we got two more, it looks like.
Oh, I can't wait for the flowers to bloom. Perhaps I'll make pretty curtains out of them. You're done sowing the seeds. Thank you. This shall help Lida Luan live up to its name, which means flower house, in case you weren't aware. We weren't always here, you know. We used to live deep in a lush forest. It was beautiful beyond compare, but almost all of it was swallowed up by the light. For a while we roamed, but eventually we found a place that men had abandoned. Together with our fellow fey folk, we decided to make it our new home. The land of everlasting spring. This is our home, and it could be yours too, forever and ever and ever. <laughs> Mortal, mortal, hear my plea. Our precious children, are thirsty, and I need you to bring them water. Who are our children, you ask? Why, they're the leafmen you see standing about our village. Adorable, aren't they? Now, you'll need to go to Long Mirror Lake to draw the water. Once you have it, see that our children have a good drenching. Oh, but be warned, the Fuath make their home in the lake. They tend to play rough, so have a care. Tim Guys. It's a good area name. Okay, that's fine. Just make sure you grab a towel before you go. Ooh, Leaf Man. Alright, let's douse this bad boy. See if he comes to life. It's gonna be like the, uh... The Hedge Guys and The Shining. so far. You've given water to our children. Thank you ever so much. 
They're all very dear to us. They wandered to into Ilmeg as stray mortals, but we grew attached to them and decided to take them in. You and yours would have been our children too, but the enchantment didn't catch as well as we'd hoped. It's never too late, of course. Yes, la la. Hey, man, yep. It's time for 14, bro. It's time to hammer this shit. Alright, Roxo. It'll take me a little bit longer, but, uh... Let me see. I've got... Yes, la la. I think I've got, like, four quests left, so... We'll see how fast I can get it. I'm so hungry I may faint. Fruit, a little fruit will set me all right. Will you go and fetch some for me? Just outside the village you'll find a hillock. Two great bell trees grow there. If you give them a shake, they should render up their sweet, succulent burdens. Yeah, I can't take too long. I gotta. I want to do some shit tonight. I'm gonna go to the uh, corn maze. It's like really nice weather, and every other year, like for the last two years, we've gone, and I've been like, I really didn't want to do the fucking maze because it was too cold. But right now, it's like primo. But uh, Joe's pretty much ready. Um, if you want to join too, Aldwin, you can. We're going to be doing uh, Don Meg, I think. It's the name of the dungeon. Be nice to have a full party. Um, I might rock so, but I'll, it won't be until later. So the plan is, is around 6 o'clock to leave. So I want to be done with the dungeon around 6, and then, uh, and then I can come back later and do, um, some extra shit. Because Monday nights are a big game at night. Um, so I'm gonna come back and play. I just gotta go do something. These people demand my time. But if Joe's... I don't know if Joe's gonna be down to be up that late, though, so we might not be able to squeeze in some of those fights. But what I probably will do is, uh... grind it out to the Dancing Plague, which is about eight quests away and that's a uh, um, a trial it looks like and then after that looks like we got about 20 quests after that until the next one so that'll work out pretty nicely because we'll have until Saturday to do those 20 quests 
Mm, so hungry. Did you get the fruit? Oh, thank you ever so much. You've saved me. <laughs> yes, yeah, saved me from my boredom. You should have seen the look on your face when the bugs came down. <laughs> ah, you've done me a great service, mortal. If there's one thing we pixies are serious about, it's having fun. Dull and painful things. Hate, hate, hate them. Sin eaters are dull and painful both, so we hate them especially. You mortals try to fight those monstrosities, but there's no fun in that. Best to avoid them altogether, we say. Yeah, the timing of the gaming kind of sucks, because I usually try to start around 9, but that's too late for Joe, because he's like, yeah, he's got a rail job now, so he has to work in the mornings. Pathetic. Can you guys hear the game audio okay? How goes it, sir? Okay, good. So, a mix of menial tasks and pranks. Yes, that pretty much sums up my own experience. They have no troubles worthy of the name. How long are we supposed to keep at this? They're clearly plans. Indeed, whenever I inquire about how much more there is to be done, the answer is ever the same. A little. I doubt they have any intention of releasing us in the near future. Orange told me a story about the pixies. They're born from the souls of those who died as children, so it's believed. They don't have memories of their previous lives. The desire to have fun remains imprinted on their souls. And so they live only to play, keeping hapless mortals for their pleasure for years on end, sometimes even until death. Hmm, in the past, when I sought to identify the true nature of ghosts, I came upon literature examining a similar subject. The soul was likened to a core that resides in the ether, and its presence is what differentiates us from such beings as sprites and arcane entities. Upon death, said core ordinarily dissipates alongside the ether that composed the flesh. However, it may be held together and bound to the corporeal realm, either by the will of its owner or by means of certain arts. In the time, in time, the soul may regather. Re God, sorry, I'm trying to plug this in and read. The soul may regather ether unto itself to assume another form, or to find newly emerged life in which to abide. The pixies may one may be one such instance of this. If ghosts are merely souls without bodies, what does that make us? I think you've become that which you fear most, brother dearest. However the pixies may have come into being, if we leave them to judge when they are satisfied, they will never be satisfied. Nay, we must negotiate new terms with the creatures, but where to begin? It seems to me we would need at least one among them to sympathize with us. In the course of your chores, did any of you encounter a pixie who seemed even fairly amenable to reason? What? You knew a pixie from before? Oh, that was a long ass time ago. Not only are you acquainted, but you've entered into a pact? You might have mentioned this sooner. At any rate, I dare to hope this will offer us a way out. Without further delay, then, let's summon this fair ool, if you please. Um, I would say that's probably about right. Say enter fail ool. The, the they're pretty long and then there's stuff.
What? Yeah, oh, I could use some caffeine. Always, man. What the fuck? Too far away from what? From what? Oh. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. From fucking what? Looks like I need some fucking coffee. That's pretty, pretty fucking sad, bro. My sapling is finally remembered about this lovely branch. But with such a half-hearted cowl, he may as well lop me off and cast me aside. <laughs> I have no sapling. Please, Feo Ool, I need you. Jesus. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? God! Use your keyboard or the software keyboard to enter, please, comma, fail ool, comma, I need you to summon your pixie friend. Okay, I'm fucking doing that. Do I have to do slash <laughs> fucking... Christ! Please fail ool, comma... What the fuck? What is this? God, do I have to plug in my fucking keyboard? Man, I don't... Ah, fuck. Fucking hate the emo... Emoji bullshit in this fucking game, dude. This is way fucking worse than emoting.
Oh, better make it perfect. What the fuck? Is that your idea of a fervent coal? A sodden log could do it with more fire. Please, God, don't do it again. No! I got here like five minutes ago. Didn't so much as utter my name. Such a heartless thing he is. Cold and cruel and heartless. Oh man. <laughs> Another self-important little brat. Just what we need. Come on, let me visor spam. Why doesn't it let me do that? That's bullshit. <laughs> Reminds me of my childhood. I'm sorry. It was a joke. Honestly, just a joke. But just now you called for me so earnestly, so fervently. I couldn't possibly stay angry at you. Very well. As your lovely branch, I will lend you my strength. You know, I actually really love having the keyboard attached, honestly. It makes it so much easier. Like, the best way to get recommendations and shit after dungeons is to, like, talk to people. Not long enough for you to think of any new games, though, apparently. If I were you, I'd be bored of myself. Now, let me make something clear. That mortal is mine. No matter what you do, he will never be yours. Never, never, ever! Not even a bit. But what about the others? Surely we can keep them. No, no, no. You can't keep them either. They're for my amusement and mine alone. And if you lay so much as a finger on my sapling, I'll scatter the contents of his bag all over your precious village. That'll be cold, hard metal, furry, festering food. Stinky, sweaty small clothes and and all manner of other terrible unmentionable things. How would you like that? Hmm? All right, all right. But will you not at least let us play with the twins? <laughs> Just while the others go and see the real game. Aye, aye, that's all we ask. And we promise to play nice. Seems we won't be joining you. I... <laughs> we'll reveal the hidden bird neck to you. Once. Yeah, for sure, with the keyboard. I mean, truly. Shall we go and see Uriange? 
Your lovely branch is useful, yes? So whenever you're in trouble, you must remember to make use of me! Jesus. This bitch is fucking crazy, bro. Fucking crazy! For Arfano and Alice's sake, let us be quick. It would be a shame to return only to find that they had been made to play one game too many. Now, the place we seek is abandoned manor of a nobleman in the sky. The Bookman's Shelves, it's called, after the fellow's vast collection of tones. An agreeable habitat for a friend, I'm sure you'll agree. Oh, wow, look, it's that Alpha from uh, Chocobo Dungeon right there. If we follow the path north, we should soon find the place. Come along. Yeah, we got Minfilia. I mean, it's like new Minfilia. But yeah. Is that a flying dick? dick to me. Oh, this place is pretty cool. You gotta get your, uh damage thing ready, Aldwin. If you're gonna join us. I don't know if you actually said you were gonna join us or not. Also, welcome Brulo to the stream. And Roxo, and you, Aldwin. Actually, welcome. Everybody. Okay. I figured, but don't want to assume... And here we are at long last. I give you Orage's humble abode. Come, let's see if he's here. did send word that thou would seek me out, but ne'er did I imagine thou wouldst arrive so soon. Hey, got a whole new get up here. Full glad am I to see thee once more, my friend, and none the worse for thy travails. Run along, Minfilia. We will meet you outside. Ah, uh, the Another stack one. Another one for you one. to imbue, if you'd be so kind. Yeah. Oh yeah, you. The PS4. Uh, yeah, it, it is any USB keyboard, and it's a must, honestly, for this for this game. Every time I like resist plugging it in for an expansion when we come back, I always regret it. It's like, oh, I just want to leave everything alone. But fuck, it's not a fun time. I take it thou hast met with our other comrades already? Man, Balthier, your voice is so different. It's almost like you got canned. That Master Alfino and Mistress Alize now travel in thy company is of great comfort to me. As for the rest, it beginneth in earnest. 
the hunting of the Light Wardens, and perforce the war with Yulmor. Hark thee then to my words, and through them behold the vision that I did glimpse, that of the Eighth Umbral Calamity. As I drifted hither to the first, traversing the boundary twixt reality and potentiality, I did bear witness to events yet to come. There I saw the combined forces of Eorzea and the Far East offering fierce resistance to the legions of Garlemald. So fierce, in fact, that they did begin to push the enemy back. Ilm by painful Ilm at first, oh my then God. Yalm by Yalm, and Malm by Malm in time. Yet the joy they felt was short-lived, for in so doing <laughs> they did force the Empire's hand. Faced with defeat, the Garleans turned to a weapon most vile. Inch by Black inch. Rose. Foot by foot. <laughs> by. <laughs> It's like just they got like three different people. They got like three different people to gargle their fucking mouthwash, and then they just wrote down what that sound would look like if it was in a book. And then that's their that's the way they measure distance in this world. Wreaking untold carnage not only in Eorzea but in the provinces of the Empire besides. The old black rose. From fighters upon the front lines to babes in their beds, none was spared. And as the casualties became too numerous to count, so did the fabric of civilization begin to unravel. Nor did the land itself escape unscathed. For spreading from the site of its release, Black Rose brought death to the very soil. To survive amidst the chaos and upheaval, men came to live by the sword the rule of law giving way, inevitably, to the rule of might. Thus was the spark struck and the fire kindled, and swiftly did it spread as a blaze in a field of straw to engulf every corner of the world. Nations worthy of the name did then cease to exist, and those souls brave and true who might have risen to restore order no more for the weapon spared not one not even thee damn an endless age of war begotten by the blight of black rose such is the legacy of the Eighth Umbral Calamity which I did behold. No matter the cost, we must forestall this tragedy. To that end, I have labored during my sojourn in this world Discovering in so doing the answer to a pressing mystery. That of Black Rose's inexplicable potency. Come. Dost thou recognize yonder chart? 
Nope. Oh, I mean, yeah, it is a chart of the elements, I guess. So kind of. Indeed. It is a rendering of the elemental wheel, such as one might find in classrooms across the source. As the chart make it plain, our world is composed of six elements, in addition to which there exist two poles in fundamental opposition. Astral, the active. Umbral, the passive. As a reflection of the source, the first naturally comprises the self-same forces. Yet, curiously, there is a notable divergence in their nomenclature. To be specific, the denizens of this world employ not the terms astral and umbral. Thus was I moved to inquire what names said forces had been assigned. A simple question which yielded a most unexpected answer. Upon demanding the name of the pole aligned with activity and growth, I was told that as life's myriad colors combined to produce black, the people of the first had called it darkness. At this did my mind begin to race. It was only when I asked what name had been given to the pole aligned with passivity that mine eyes were opened to the truth. Peace and tranquility being as purest white unmarred by color, I was told it had been given the name of light. That's umbral light and astral darkness, yes? I'm no etherologist, but it strikes me that the nomenclature of the first is rooted in the generation of the two forces, while our own appears to focus on their effects. Which makes one wonder, have we had it backwards all this time? Yes. It is indeed a compelling question, and one which beareth closer examination. Yet what knowledge we already possess sufficeth to explain the chain of events. The phenomenon of etheric thinning observed in the source is the consequence of light power of stasis flowing in from the first to stifle the movement of ether within the land and according to master alfino black rose slayeth by halting the circulation of ether within living beings should such a weapon be unleashed even as the first were rejoined replete as it is with light We would have a disaster of untold proportions on our hands. A calamity. Uh-oh. A full reset on the series. Well, at least we have a better grasp of what we're facing. Well, the game at least. Our objective, however, remains unchanged. We are to eliminate the Light Warden of Ilneg. Speaking of which, were you able to ascertain its whereabouts? Aye. It is all but certainly ensconced within Leergir, the castle which standeth in the midst of the lake. To enter said stronghold, we must needs turn to the Pixies for aid. Fortunately, I have become quite adept at courting their cooperation. Henceforth shall I accompany you and do all in my power to ensure that my vision doth not come to pass. One million experience. My friend, ere I speak of the task at hand, there is a question I would pose to thee. What thinkest thou of mine appearance? Would you take up astrology? Indeed, though the night be lost behind the shroud of blinding light, doubt not but that the stars will shine still. I have chosen to avail myself of their guidance, that I might navigate the sea of uncertainty that stretcheth before us. 
For a blessing, my prior studies of astrology did provide me with adequate grounding in the art. But enough of myself, let us now speak of our task. As I did mention, if we are to enter Lygia, we must needs gain the Pixies' cooperation. This is a simple matter of presenting unto them a suitable gift. I shall procure a selection of vivens, or viens, sorry, that shall please their palates. Thankred, pray assist me in this endeavor. Meanwhile, sir, I bid thee obtain that which will please their eyes. In these parts, there abideth a vilekin known for its beauteous wings, the hawker. I shall lend thee a receptacle within which thou mayest capture a weakened specimen. Thank you. Exuberant pixie. Alright, bring it on, fucker. Oh shit, I'm supposed, to, I'm supposed to weaken him. I'm just like, whoa! Die! <laughs> I mean, I still try to get my rotation down, so it's worth it. It's not a big deal. Exuberant pixie. Whoa, who is that? Okay. Thou art returned. Wert thou able to capture a hawker? Here's your freak cube. Ah, truly magnificent set of wings. I shall treat them at once to make fast their vibrant colors. Thanker too should return anon, upon which I shall ready all the items for presentation. Pray take thine ease, meanwhile. Ah, uh, no. It is done. The pixies shall be well pleased with these gifts. I'll slap them on, though. I'll look at it. Ah, lest I forget. I've just been pounding through. Oh, nice. That's pretty sweet. The pixies loved lights. White orosite, newly forged for thy use. They'll fucking clink into Our it until they die. Our mission rejoining. We will most assuredly cross paths with those who crave the contrary. Our eternal enemies. Our eternal enemies. Thus did enemies. I choose to abide in this ether-rich land, the better to fashion a trap for the Asian's essence. May I come in now? You may indeed, assuming you've finished. I did as you asked. That's my girl, thank you.
<laughs> Good job. I should probably explain. Though my body remained behind in the source, its limitations saw fit to accompany me. Which is to say, I cannot manipulate ether. I took up the gun blade for its defensive advantages. But on account of my little impairment, I cannot imbue the ammunition myself. Luckily for me, Linfilia has quite a talent for it. Linfilia, once we set forth, we are not like to return for some while. If thou wouldst choose tomes to take with thee, let it be now. Really? May I? Of course, my dear. Yet have care thou dost not add overmuch to thy burden, lest I incur Thancred's ire. spoken to him of thine encounter with the Menphilia of Eld. Well, I suppose now is as good a time as any. As you know, I freed young Menphilia from captivity in Yulmore some three years past. Not long after, the two of us journeyed to the south of Armoren, to the edge of the empty, where the flood was halted. It was there that she awakened, the Minfilia of old, my Minfilia. What? What must I do to bring you back? My dearest Thancred, as I am now, I am no different from an Asir. This child is but a vessel. One of many I have used that I might spread word of her enduring blessing and preserve the flame of hope. In my name, each has died, never having lived her own life. I have taken enough. Ah, it's like a duel situation from uh, thirteen I will two take here. No more. But what of your suffering, your sacrifice? This isn't fair. I will not stand for it. I cannot. There must be something we can do. Tell me. Should the day come when this child grows weary of fighting and wishes to cast it all aside, <laughs> then shall I take up her burden. But should she wish instead to become the master of her own destiny, then shall I bequeath to her my all. Imbued with the strength that I reserve for rebirth, she may come to wield my powers as her own. And what of my wishes? What of Flamines? What, what of all the people who love and care for you and want nothing more than to see you again? Too bad. Shit's gotta get done, bro. It is not their decision to make. It is hers. This child's. This Minfilia's. And she has a huge gap between her lips and her teeth. It's really bugging me. You have ever watched over me, Thancred.
Now I ask that you do the same for her. Protect her. Teach her. Stand by her as you stood by me. There is much and more she does not know. She needs a guide to show her the ways of the world, or she will never find her own path. When the time comes, you will find me here. Until that day. Linfilia, wait! What? What happened? You were possessed. many things, where we came from, what we fight for, but of that day, I have not spoken. How do you want this to end? <laughs> Come on, let me do it! Another possessed of the blessing of light, the first hath begun to rise up in defiance of its fate. The question remaineth, however, who shall take up the flame of hope which Minfilia hath borne for so long? Whether we will it or no, the choice must soon be made. took so long. It was so hard to choose. In the end, I settled on just the one. That is well. Now, if all is in order, let us set forth for Lida Loran. Is that you, Schweiz? Schweiz? Oh, it's me. Hang on, guys. I'm gonna I get can't hear you. I'm also eating. I'm just gonna leave and come back. It's like this FF15 fishing game soundtrack. It's so calming. It's so relaxing, I say. It's fucking beautiful, bro. It's 
fucking beautiful. Fuck's my little disc. Or my little camera. Something to give me a microphone. Something. Baldwin and uh, Roxo, you guys ready? Can you guys hear Joe like in in the game? Aldwin, can you hear the game still? Or any of you guys? I don't think you can. Fuck, dude. Okay. I'm gonna open up my audio settings. There we
Yeah. Alright guys, one sec. I'm going to end the stream on here, and then I'm going to begin it again on the PlayStation. So I'll be back in just a sec here.